down, let's say three to four days after, we were still running around the circle. It was more like we were not even leaving the environment because every, everywhere looked alike. So I just told my sister, even if we are going to the land of the dead, four days is enough to, for us to have gotten to where we are going. Are you sure there is no problem? So I said, nothing, nothing, it just, let's just endure. And then after a while, she will ask me, nothing you said is true. Even if it's land of the dead, by now we should have gotten somewhere that is close to the land of the dead that we are going to. No. And the funniest thing is, all these things was going on under a scorchy sun. Like, the sun was not friendly, very hot. There are no trees around. Everything is just blank. Like, you're just seeing only the soil. That um, sand is the only thing you're seeing. So you're not seeing anything that is going to give you hope. And then to worsen it all, you're seeing bones. If they pack and say rest, the only thing you're going to see is probably bones from animals and human beings that have died. Some people will just, maybe like people who like playing, will just put their hand like as if they are packing sand and then the next thing is bone. They will just scream, hey, see bone, no. everybody will run, you know. It was just, now I'm laughing, but then it was very traumatizing like you see weird things only so um after that we noticed that actually we were running in a circle so it um the driver explained to someone that there were security persons around policemen that's the niger police so we are not supposed to pass them except they are not there so we have to wait until those policemen are out. And then I think after a while, those policemen started getting really close. So the drivers left us. They fled for their lives. And then where they parked us was very hot. So we sat there, we were waiting for them to come back. Those security um, or policemen didn't even come the, where we were. But then we lost someone while struggling for water. There was no water. The um, drivers had already left, so I think the man's heart failed. He's not a young boy, he's not, he's not, he should be like around um, 50 something. So I think his heart failed or something. I don't even know what to say happened to him, but he was just lying down. Nobody had a clue that the man was already dead. So um, when the drivers eventually came back, they found out the guy was dead. They just did their um, Arab or Muslim ritual just did something, put their clothes, then used sand to cover the man and that was all we left. You know, we all cried while living, people were singing sorrowful songs. And then um, after a while, um, the police caught up with us. But that part too was traumatizing for me because the drivers left again as usual. They, they started running. This time they were running and asking us to jump out of the hills. They were running with their cars. It's not like they are running, um, they parked somewhere and left. No, this time they were running with their cars and they were asking us to jump off the car. It was difficult for me to jump. I'm not, I don't know, I'm slim, but I wouldn't say I'm athletic. So a lot of people were jumping out. It was hard for me. So, but at some point I jumped. I didn't sustain any injury as I then. But then when I was running, because of the nature of the place, there are tons everywhere. The tons kept piercing my, my leg and everything. No sandals. We already lost our bags in the car. I was just um, running alongside people. So the kind of race was, people are running towards this direction. As they are running, they are running back. People are running towards this. You join these ones, you know? Everybody is trying to escape, but the security persons had already surrounded everywhere. And then with armored cars, I wouldn't have an idea if they were um, asked to shoot anyone, but they were shooting, kind of to threaten us to stay in one place, but people were still running. So the shooting continued, didn't stop. So while they were shooting, at some point, they are not shooting like randomly, like maybe releasing bullets often, but just once, 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 just like that. So people, a lot of people were running towards a direction. I joined them. Anywhere they are running towards, I joined them just like that. But then at some point, my sisters already left me. I don't even know where they ran to. The guy that was supposed to be taking care of us also left. So I just stood somewhere and then I said, if these people are going to kill me, let them just kill me. I was crying. like. God, I was 
crying seriously. I was, I was saying, just kill me. Let me. If I just remember that moment, I'm like, God, if I could survive that, there is nothing that God can't save anyone from. I was crying. I was saying, just shoot me. Just kill me. Let me just die. What kind of suffering is this? I was crying. And then the guy stopped. And then he was, say, he was like giving me signal to come closer, come closer. So when I, I got closer to them, the man said, enter this place. I entered. He gave me water. That was the first thing he did. So it was like, don't worry, don't worry, no problem. So when he said that, don't worry, don't worry, no problem, I just felt like, okay, then why is it that they are now chasing us? Is it like they want to save us? Is it like they want to help or anything? So at some point, they brought us together. They were able to put, in fact, they, they were able to gather as many people as possible to the extent that we filled this um, big truck was filled with people and then some hillocks too had to join in taking us to the police station. They brought books, we started writing our names, everyone write your name, write your country, write your name, write your country, everyone, people were just writing their names and country, we did the same. So they brought us together and then um, they told us, okay, um, they are going to take us somewhere and then that's where we will sleep for the night and then they will uh, register us and return us to our country. But before then, a white man came to speak to us. So the man uh, asked us where we are traveling to and why are we traveling. So, so many people were saying, me, yeah, I was just looking. So many people were saying, there's hunger in my country. Oh, um, they are killing us in my country. There is suffering in my country. There is this in my country. You know, a lot of people were saying there are reasons for traveling. He wasn't asking personally. He was just asking the entire people who were there. And then they were filming it. So, Majority of us had to cover our face so that we don't get um, captured. But some people were really vocal, like saying so many things before the man addressed us and told us that he's been to Nigeria severally. And then he's been to most of the African countries too, that we have food. A lot of us have good shelter, particularly Nigerians. He kept hammering, particularly Nigerians. There is good food in your country. I've tasted this, I've tasted that. You know, he mentioned most of the meals and then he told us, that there is no cost for this um, kind of traveling. Do you even know where you're going to? Do you know if it's what's where you're going to and all of that? Then they took us somewhere. They put us together in um, a particular environment. And then a few, few days later, they came to tell us that um, we'll be leaving um, back to our country. So there was rumor everywhere. People were saying, hm, I pity people that will go back to Nigeria. I just pity people that will go back to Nigeria. The kind of suffering they will go and suffer. Police is already waiting for them. My brother called me, said that there is news that they are bringing back people, that police is waiting for them. They will arrest them because they traveled without documents. So we were all scared. And then we decided to run away, majority of us. So um, at night, while the security guards were sleeping, Majority of us started jumping out of the fence and then somebody brought an idea to open the gate, you know, some kind of dubious act, which is not actually good, which wasn't good for us. But because of the kind of rumor, because of the kind of things we heard, we joined, everybody left. You know, we're still hiding. It's not like you're leaving and you're just coming out to say, I'm, I'm going, no. You're hiding from place to place, hiding, hiding until we got to a particular house. Um, when we left, we got to a particular house where there were six of us in a group now, no longer I and those my um, three people, they were with me. Those two sisters, that guy, the four of us were complete as I then, and then um, one, two other guys joined us. So the person that owned the house agreed to keep us in her house for that night. And then I think her husband came back and asked to where she told the husband. The husband brought a driver. So none of us had an idea that we were sold. So the man sold us to the driver. None of us had an idea. We just thought the man helped us. You know, that was the idea in my head. Like, ah, God bless this man. He finally helped us out of this place. So the driver took us, proceeded to somewhere they called Nitel. That was what they told us, that that place is Nitel. So they hid us in their family house at first. Then um, 
In that their family house, we met their um, um, one of the sisters that had already gone to Italy before. The lady told us she can't speak English, so she had to use diagram to express herself. She gave a sign of water and then a sheep on the water, and then she told us how she was walking there. She was washing clothes. That's probably doing dry cleaning or something like that. I don't know what she was doing over there, but me, I just assumed she, and then I told my sisters, that means maybe she did house help work over there. So we had fun with them because they were um, nice people. I didn't figure out if they, they were among the people who bought us, but they were nice to us. They gave us food. That was the first place where I had to brush my teeth, have my bath, you know. It was a good treatment for us. So throughout the four days we were in their house, they treated us nicely. And then after a while, the driver came back. And then the driver told us that in a few days he will come and take us. This thing was already summing up to like three weeks already within the desert environment. A few days later, he came again and then he said, um, oh yeah, get ready. You'll be leaving this night. After a few hours, he came back in the night. And then they told us everyone to lie down inside the hillocks and then they sealed it. So they took us from there, took us to another garage. Then that garage, they had a lot of drivers now. It wasn't just him. So he was, I think he was looking around for passengers, but didn't succeed that day. So he told us to stay in a particular room, don't come out, till he comes back. Four days later, he came back. Came back with food. He didn't take us out of there. After like two days, he came back again, came back with food. So I told my brother, sir, the food is not as if he's enticing. This guy has caged us here. Probably something will go wrong. Let's leave this place. So the, the man and then the other guy that was with us said, okay, let's leave. Okay, so if we leave now, where will we go to? I said, me, if I leave like this, I'll be walking down. I would, I would want to see a policeman. They should take me back to Nigeria. What kind of suffering is this one? This place that we are, they locked us for like four days. Not as if the um, house is very enclosed. That same breeze that was even blowing in the other place was still blowing and bringing sand. So that I'm not comfortable here. They said, okay, let's leave. We left. We met some drivers. Those ones, ah, come, come. They served food. Eat. Don't worry. We will take you. Libby. They are not even calling it Libya. They will tell you Libby. Libby. I'm like, I'm not going to Libby. Me. Nigeria. No. Libby. Like, their own is... Don't worry, we will help you anywhere you want to go to. That particular place you want to go to will help you get there, but you can't go back. So um, I told my brother that these guys are actually saying that they want to help us go back to, um, to, to go to Libya, but they can't help us go to Nigeria. My brother was like, we well, intended to go back to Nigeria before. We're going forward though, it's not backward. You know, after everything, we spent a few hours with those guys, no head way out. I told them, they are not even ready to take us to Libya, carried my bag. And it was more like that stubbornness was actually what saved us because I don't even know what was their plan. But I just told my brothers, I'm not staying here one minute again, I'm leaving. So because I was stubborn, they said, hey, if we leave you now, who knows what will happen to you? Oh yeah, let all of us keep going. They joined me. The drivers were offended. They were like, come back, come back, come back, come back. We didn't answer, we left until we met, um, these um, um, policemen, so the, one of the policemen just called us and that my bro said, uh, we are going to Libya. The man said, ah, uh, you don't have, like he was explaining to that my bro, hey, you people don't have problem, I will carry you to where your brothers are, plenty. Um, and then I figured out, okay, plenty Nigerians. I, then I, I told my brother, if there is a place where a lot of people are, it's better than this place where it's just the six of us. So they took us from there to where a lot of Nigerians are. I met a lot of people. I felt a bit comfortable. There was no much space for the six of us, but we just had to like manage in that place where they kept us. And then we spent some days again there. So um, we were waiting for the drivers to come. They didn't come. And then after a few days, um, the drivers came. So they started calling, like they, they shared us into groups. 
this driver take this one, this driver take this one, this driver take this one. So then we're already approaching Libya. So they took us, it wasn't now up to um, two days, we got to Libya. So when we got to Libya, um, the, I think it was the border, they came, the driver came down, then asked us to, he then asked us to pay a certain amount of money. He asked everyone to bring a certain amount of money so that my brother helped us to pay us. And then they, um, they took us from there. After paying that money, they took us from there. They just proceeded into Libya. We got to Saba. The um, driver called, the driver called someone. That particular person they called came around and um, the person told us that he is going to take this group somewhere. So they took that particular group. They were just taking um, people like in groups, in different groups, in different groups. And then from that point, um, they took us to um, a particular man. The man is Igbo. So when we got to his house, the man looked at all of us. He was like, the guys, this is your room. The girls, this is your room. So in that room where he said it's for the girls, I saw a lot of ladies, even people that were younger than me, were in that same room. So I was like, how did you guys get here? What is going on? You know, we started talking. A lot of Benin girls, they were just saying, ah, welcome on this one, Jadid. Welcome on this one. You know, Jadid means new person. You know, they were just saying a lot of things. And then at the end of the day, I got um, bonded to a particular lady that, that really shared um, her experience. It happened to be that she has not been able to pay her money. So when I asked her, she said 300,000. So we started getting information from the people within that if you're unable to pay your money, you stay there. So towards the evening of that same day, like around um, 5 p.m., the man came to um, assemble all the new passengers. All the new passengers come outside, we came out. He took us to a particular hall, asked all of us to sit on the floor. We sat down. He said, we are welcome. We answered. Me, I was even feeling comfortable. Believing that this person is, is from my place, he's a Nigerian, so he should be nice, you know. So when he was about to tell us what Libya was, the first thing was a gunshot. In fact, for like a few seconds, I couldn't recover from the shock. I had to hide behind our bros, like the whole of us just held him. The man said, Everybody, oh yeah, this way, this way. Like, he had to like scatter us so that we don't get to communicate with each other. He had big, big boys. In fact, those big boys, if, if they handle one person, I'm sure the person will not survive it. So I was shaking. And then the man said, he just wants to let us know that we are in Libya now. And that now that you are here, he's giving us just a few hours to give him his money. He paid for us. He bought us. He was saying it like, you know when someone is actually practically trying to pass a message across to you with everything he's got inside, the kind of anger, I'm like, I didn't offend this man before. But the way he was saying it was like, I'm just telling you that you have to pay this money within the space of so-so and so hours. If you don't pay it for the girls, ha, you walk and give me my money. For the boys, you die here. So the thing sounded somehow. I just, we just had to like beg him, just allow us to discuss who we are from the same um, family. He said, okay. After a while, then my brother said, please give us your phone. He's, you are begging, you are begging, you are begging in tears. If you are even asking for the phone, it's not up to like, they are not giving you to call. They are giving you to just say, I'm in Libya, please call me back. You can't use their airtime to inform whoever you are informing. Sorry. So um, at the end of the day, we were able to reach out to the people that um, invited us to France. Those ones said uh, they would send um, someone to come and pick us in a few hours. We should be patient. We were there, we were waiting. After a while, I came to call down my brothers. Your people, they disturb me with call. Your people, they disturb If they disturb me again with call, eh? Now I beat, now I go beat you, you know. We we're hearing it from our own side. And I was like, is that not bros? This person is talking to like this. You know, the fear was more. 
we pleaded, okay, can we talk to bro? So you have to plead for the, to see a guy in that room. In fact, you're not even allowed to see a guy. It's, they don't give you room to see any guy. So we we're able to like talk to bros. How far did they call? He now asked for phone again to reach out to them. So he was able to get to them uh, again and then they sent someone across. So I think the person who was supposed to bring the money was now pricing lower than the 300. I think the person was now saying 250. That was where the anger came from. At the end of the day, the man came with the uh, money. He paid um, one million for the four of us and then took us from that place to his house. Um, from his house, we moved. It's still within the, um, yes, still in Libya. So from that place to um, the sea coast, and um, the sea coast was not um, very easy for me as well. That from his house to the sea coast was also very traumatizing. And then at some point, I even um, had an experience where I was sleeping in a room, in that, that particular room was um, mixed with both guys and um, ladies. So there were these um, Sudanese that they, were, they brought into the room to join us because initially it was with Ghanaians. So the Sudanese took a part of the room, we took a part of the room. And so in the night I was sleeping, I covered myself because I have this habit of using wrapper to cover myself from foot to head. And then this, there was this guy that, that I don't know, among the Sudanese, he came, crawled to where I was, walked up to me. I woke up, I was like, what? The guy put his hand in his pocket, brought out five dinner, five dinner in, in um, in their money is 500 naira, Nigerian naira, and was begging me like, I could not wrap my head around it. So I just screamed, and then the Ghana guy woke up first and was like, what is happening, you know? They started um, arguing amongst themselves, and um, at the end of the day, those Sudanese, they apologized on behalf of their brother, that they were sorry about what happened. Um, probably he just thought something different in his mind before bringing it that they are sorry. So the whole thing was, Migrants abusing migrants, um, um, security agencies abusing migrants. The experience was, was just too hard for me. I had a case where someone was trying to communicate something to me that I should sit down in, in the, in the uh, vehicle, those um, long um, trucks. I didn't understand him. I don't know that gums means sit down. I'm just new in the environment. But this, this man had an idea in his head that any language he speaks or whatever he says, I should understand. So the next thing was, he, I don't know what, what he used in hitting me on my head. I was bleeding and then somebody was saying, sit down, sit down. That's what he's saying, sit down. So I sat down and then I noticed I was bleeding. And that, ah, the lady was like, ah, sorry. If I knew you were the one he was talking to, I would have told you to sit down. If you are sat down, the guy will not hit you. And then in most cases, for them to say sit down, they will have to shoot, you know, for you to sit down. At least the, the communication um, differences should have been understood by them, but the case was different. For them, when they communicate, you don't understand, they become violent. So it was really hard till we got to the sea coast, spent some time in, uh, um, around the sea coast trying to cross, had people die, someone died while giving births. So um, had cases of people dying, um, a particular lady died trying to give birth because there were no professionals around and then people uh, claimed that in their countries they were professionals, they could help her um, give birth, they could help her deliver, you know. It was, it was a sad experience at the end of the day, she died, the baby died and I just told myself, this, this one is just a wasted time, like wasted efforts. You're trying to get out of trouble, you get into more trouble. And even family doesn't know where you are because you can't even call them. I don't have access to any um, communication device. I, I can't reach anyone except maybe I'll have to pay someone to borrow his phone or have to, you know, the, the um, situation was even... Um, very difficult because a lot of people will not even give you their phones to make call. They wouldn't even want you to buy the airtime to make the call. So it was a very difficult one until finally 
the security um, agencies came, they um, arrested every one of us around that um, sea coast. They arrested everyone. In fact, people tried to escape. Some tried to jump into the water. You know, people tried to run. But wherever you are, they'll find you and they'll bring you back to the spot. And then um, they took us to a detention center, Garyan. After a few days, they also took us from there to Tripoli, um, Terigmata Detention Center. So it was in Terigmata that um, the um, International Organization for Migration came visiting. And then some UN agencies, once, once they come around, they check on us. Whenever they are coming, these um, Libyan agents, um, policemen, they will ask us, they will give us so many things. You wouldn't even know if it is the UN um, guys that brought it. But when they are gone, they will lock us up back again. When they come around, we'll do sports, they will bring us out. It's as if we are enjoying our lives. When those guys are gone, we'll go back to the prison, they lock us up again and all of that. So um, IOM came, we all filled forms, those who want to go back home because a lot of people said they are not going. Those ones that didn't go did uh, what they call banana mish, you pay, um, someone pays for you, like someone will come around, pay, Yes, kind of build them, um, pay the money, take you out of the prison, and then you work for the person. So I almost tried that, but a particular lady, she's from Delta, so she speaks my language. And then she told me that if I pay this money, first she used our language to tell me, Idama Yangso. That is, if you try this, you just die. And then if I remember that, she told me that, and if anyone comes to me to say, I want to help you to live here, um, I would just tell them I'm not interested, I want to go back to Nigeria.